Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And please subscribe. <sighs> Oh, I always feel yawny sometimes when I do a recording. So, it's very windy outside, so if you're wondering what that background sound is, it's the weather. Uh, so, not a lot I can do about that. Now, this is going to be a short recording. I can hear the cheer, I can hear the cheers in the background. Yay, a short one. And it might not be as short as I am expecting it to be, but it's it's an exercise to do. But it's a really nice exercise that might seem really weird to do it. Bikes. It might seem, might seem, might seem, yeah, just strange, you know, a bit, uh, a bit, mm. but it's okay. And of course, you don't have to do anything, you know, you don't have to do these things. But I would suggest give it a try because. There's nothing to lose. It's a win-win situation. You know, there is nothing to lose. And I kind of feel that for all of the recordings. You can't lose anything. Maybe a little bit of time, you know, but other than that. So this exercise is basically writing a letter to yourself but specifically writing a letter to yourself um, I feel another way to describe this if you knew somebody that was identical to you if you knew somebody let's pretend you know somebody that's gone through everything that you've gone through in life that has the same issues, whether physical, whether mental health issues, whether emotional issues, relationship issues, whatever it is, as well as all the good stuff as well, you know, but just imagine someone's an identical, what do they call them, dimple doppers or something, dimple, I don't know. If someone's exactly the same as you. And what you want to do is reassure them. You want to send them a letter. And I say the word letter, it doesn't have to be written. You can do it in email. You could do a voice recording. You know, you're not actually going to send it to yourself. No one else is ever going to hear it or read it. It's just a letter. So I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a term letter, but as I said, you can. It can be however in whatever process you choose. I mean, you could do it on a white, big whiteboard with a marker pen if that's what you wanted to do. And that is it. That's the entire exercise. It sounds simple, or it might sound complicated. It depends on you know, how well I've described and explained what it is that I'm asking you to do. Basically, you're writing a letter to yourself. A letter of reassurance to yourself. But 
but from a perspective of being another person so that you can get rid of that block that you might have which perhaps has prevented you from being kind to yourself you know verbally inside internally internal voice saying nice things reminding you about your good qualities about your positive attributes about the fact that you're a human being and you just need to take a break sometimes you need to take you know just be a bit a bit more gentle on yourself and also to remind yourself that things will be okay things are going to be okay now it's up to you what you write the only rule with this letter is it's positive it's not a letter of uh, you're not writing down to yourself all the things you don't like about yourself that's the opposite none of that is allowed in this letter no put downs not even as a joke even if it's really funny even if it's really funny don't write it down because this isn't that time this is a time for being really really gentle writing a really really kind and gentle letter to you and the reason I, I put it in a in the framework of writing a letter to someone else that's identical to you is because it might make it a little bit easier when you start thinking of someone else suffering or someone else having a hard time of it at times maybe someone else that gets a sense of hopelessness now and then or more often than you know they'd like to so this gives you an opportunity to write the letter that you would write in that situation let's imagine you've just been with that person they've told you their life story and you write a letter back to them and saying look you know you've been through a lot you've actually done really well I don't think you realise how much you've accomplished in your life do you, I think, do you understand where I'm coming from with this it's uh, oh this bit's now not part of the, le the letter this is me talking now it's it's about being really gentle there's a, a person called Zig Ziglar who said he was, he was a motivational speaker and he said if you treat every single person you ever meet like they're suffering inside then you'll be treating every single person correctly because everyone is suffering inside in, to various degrees and I think I think maybe sometimes we use the word suffering in to mean something extreme, which it can. But it can also mean someone that's got some pain. Whether physical, emotional, you know? And everybody's got some of that. Everybody's lost somebody, everyone's 
bereaved. You know, everyone's lost someone they cared about in their life at some point. And it might not even be a family member. It might be, it might be a famous person. That's, I mean, for example, I was watching a documentary about Whitney Houston earlier, and I just felt so sad. I felt almost, uh, and I'm not going to judge myself for it. And not. You know, this part of me wants to mock myself and like, that's ridiculous. You never met her. You know, why would you care? But actually, I do care. And I I had love for Whitney Houston. A different kind of love. You know, it wasn't um, romantic love. But I was a big, big fan of hers. And as a young man, I really... She was my crush. My celebrity crush. If that make you know, if that makes sense. So, when she passed away, it was awful. And then, just seeing that documentary, it's, so there was some suffering there. It's it's not enough to, you know, it's not major. It's not going to affect my life. The level of suffering that I was experiencing earlier today, but it's still suffering. And that's what life is about. You know, life, it's not what it's about, but it's part of life. As the Buddha said, life is suffering. But it's also pleasure, it's also love, it's also kindness, it's also laughter. They all go together, you know. The door needs to be open for all of those things. Otherwise the door's closed to pretty much all of those things. We don't have a different door for different emotions. It seems they all need to be come and go through the same door. But if you leave that door open, they will all come, but they will all go as well. They don't stick around because misery has its own home. Because if you're there, you know, if it doesn't get what it needs from you, it'll go elsewhere. It won't stick around. In the same way, I suppose happiness presents itself to you. But if you're not noticing it, you don't perhaps want that feeling. Which might seem strange, but I've plenty of times in the past had a feeling of like lightness and happiness and pushed it away because I didn't want that. I wanted to feel miserable however ridiculous that might sound to some people but that's how I felt at that time and other times I embrace it and it's a choice what can doesn't always feel it doesn't feel like a choice a lot of the time but it is a choice so you know some people I try and get across the idea that we choose what we do for example if I need to go to the toilet which I think I might do soon, which again has got nothing to do with the recording. I don't know why I seem to like talking about going to the toilet, but I could say I've got no choice but to press the, the, the pause button and go to the toilet. But that's not true. I don't have to pause. I don't, I don't have to do anything. I could hold it in. Not indefinitely, but I could hold it in and I could cause a lot of pain and eventually it's going to come out. You know, it's just life, isn't it? Or I could walk into the toilet and take the, record, <laughs> take the recorder with me and continue talking. Which means you'd have a very echoey and you'd have... Well, you'd, the, back, the, the wind in the background would continue, but just a, you know, a different type. And, or I could, I could just go to the toilet in my pants. Again, it's ridiculous, but it's true. I have that choice. That's when I talk about choices. Because we limit ourselves and say, oh, I've got no choice, I have to do this. No, you don't. It's a good idea to do something 
because the alternative might be horrible you know it's like not turning up for work and not phoning in I mean that could that could be the end of that job but it's still a, it's still a choice and I made that decision many times in the past I've lost loads of jobs from just not turning up in my youth my 20s and stuff or my teens as well but it is a choice so it's about I guess making decent choices for you just like writing this letter is a choice you don't have to do it but what's there to lose the worst case scenario is you read the letter and you read nice things about yourself that's the worst case scenario and that doesn't sound too bad to me doesn't sound like a nightmare sounds almost could almost be enjoyable that's why I think that funerals should be held before we die not when we will but just we should have that ceremony call it something different but have that ceremony where all the people the family, friends, loved ones colleagues, whatever get together and say nice stuff about us imagine how beautiful that would be to actually realise that that person really does care about you and how many people care about you my, my nan used to say um, one of her sayings was if you don't visit me during if you don't visit me while I'm alive don't visit me at my funeral that's what was her fear. Like, don't visit me. Don't come to my funeral if you don't visit me when I'm alive. And I said, okay, I'll come and visit you then. But she was very, like, quite to the point with that stuff. It's like, and I suppose this is kind of the flip side to that. Why wait to say the things that are important to say? until it's too late to say it why not say it now and although we're not focusing on other people you're focusing on yourself so why not tell yourself this stuff I'm guessing you may never have done it I've never done it I'm going to do it I've kind of done sort of similar things but not quite as specific as this I've done letters to other people that I've never sent It's actually a, a, a Buddhist ceremony um, thing. It's a tradition thing. I don't know if it's of all Buddhist schools, but it was for the one I went to. Where people would actually talk out loud and say something nice about somebody that's in the room with them. So let's say there might be a hundred people in that room. Not everybody's going to know the person like closely. So it might be um, a mitra ceremony, which basically is when you become a Buddhist. A mitra is kind of means friend. You become part of the sangha, which is the you know the collective of Buddhists. I'm not going to bore you with Buddhism. But I'm just going to say that um, 
when you've got a room full of people and maybe 10, 15 people stand up or they don't always stand up it's just say oh I want to um, just say you know you're you're really kind and you know whatever it could be you're very considerate and you helped a lot with when you helped a lot with my with my kid was going through those problems and you know whatever it could be and then you have another person stand up and say this sort of a different thing and it's really powerful because I've, I've seen this done I suppose this is kind of where, where I'm coming because I, I've seen the responses and I've felt the responses for myself when other people have done it because I've been through that ceremony and there was one particular one where there was this young lady she's probably about 22 um, some of the things that were said about her and her dad was there and hearing her dad say all these lovely things about her I started crying I kind of had I held it I didn't have to hold it in but I held it in but I really choked up and I just wanted it to be my dad you know I wanted to be her and him to be my dad saying those things and it's kind of then when I really realised how powerful that is not just for her but for other people as well um, that were witnessing it so I thought I'd kind of I don't know if this has ever been done um, I know writing letters to yourself has been helpful and there's other ways of doing it like planning and making goals I've never I don't recall ever seeing uh, the idea of writing a letter to yourself a letter of reassurance um, but it might have done so I'm not going to I'm not going to claim anything's mine or I'm just going to say I don't recall it but it might I've done a little bit of research but I haven't seen anything but it doesn't matter and there's other ways of doing letters but I'm not going to focus on the others just this one specific thing and maybe I'll talk about other letter writing exercises that perhaps you can do in the future but I will, I will say one thing I did uh, I had a quite a bit of a meltdown in 1997 like a really really bad meltdown it was in an evening luckily my friend wasn't there because I lived with a friend he was out and I just lost it completely lost it didn't know what I was going to do I really didn't know kind of where I was going sort of mentally in that that time everything I lost my job my girlfriend and everything was just all going and it all, all seemed to crumble on that evening so what I did is I wrote letters to three different people and they weren't nice letters not all of them were nice letters and I was quite hostile I think in I think the first one and I was less hostile in the second letter and I started to be quite nice in the third letter that I wrote And one thing I noticed is when I started writing, because I was thinking all these horrible things and I was feeling aggressive, once I started writing it out on paper, on one level it felt nice, in a sense of an expression, 
you know, from an expressive perspective, it was a release. It definitely was a release. On the other side, it didn't feel so nice because I was imagining the person I was writing a letter to actually reading it. And I had no intention of sending the letters out. At least I don't think I did. I didn't send them out, but I don't think I had any intention of sending them. And I had this, I think it was a realisation, but the idea of them reading it, how upsetting it would be for them to read that. Which would kind of be the opposite to what we're doing here where you're writing yourself a letter of reassurance. It's an emotional thing, but it's a different kinds of emotions. So you're not writing to yourself being horrible or unkind or cruel. It's the opposite. You're being kind, you're being gentle, you're being reassuring. And none of it is false. It's all real. You speak from your heart. And another part of me kicked in where I kind of thought, this isn't really me. Because I wouldn't say this. First of all, I wouldn't send a letter. I wouldn't send such a horrible letter. I never have, never will. I can write it, but I wouldn't send it. The idea of her, her reading it, or him reading it, was it actually uh, felt upset with the idea of it but again it was kind of a cathartic there was it was almost like I felt upset then at the same time that relief that she won't be reading it but also realising that that's not that's not who I am maybe part of who I am but it's not really who I am it's the anger the frustration the depression or whatever I was going through at the time and realising that actually after writing it down I didn't feel that way anymore. It released those feelings. And I was really surprised because I didn't expect it to. I didn't go into it, didn't do it thinking, oh, I've read loads of books and I know about this, this would, this would be good. Because I hadn't. Um, I just had the idea of doing it and I'm sure I probably read it somewhere you know it wasn't my idea people have been doing this probably for for a long long time but I just had the idea it came into my head and I thought I'll give that a go and I did it and it worked And I have written letters or lists of what I like about myself. I've written lists of gratitude, things I'm grateful for. And again, these are all things that we can do. And I'll perhaps talk about some of those in the future. But for this letter of reassurance, this letter of kindness, this letter of love, that you're going to send to yourself. And do what you need to do to get into the perspective where you can actually see yourself who you are. It's not how you want to be. It's not who you think you are. Just how you are. How another person will see you. Experience you. The things you know to be true the kindness you know to be there it's about getting in touch with that positive reality
And even though I said it's going to be a short, short recording, still needs to go for half an hour. But you know, it's me, full of stamina I am. It's easy to say that when I'm sitting down in a chair, isn't it? So give it a go. And I'm going to do it as well. I mean, I've done it in different formats. In the past, I used to write poems. I used to write songs. I used to find, try and find different ways to express myself. I used to do um, vlogs as well. Online, on YouTube. Um, so I, I find expressing myself verbally is something that I uh, am attracted to as a process. I find that like, my my ideal way to do it for me it used to be writing so I used to keep journals for about over 20 years I used to keep journals I had hundreds of book pads full of like writing and stuff from the age of 18 to 40 I think 41 so yeah it's like quite a lot of that stuff but I don't really do that anymore it's more verbal it's more yeah so I guess it just changes it doesn't matter how it is it doesn't matter if you do it through painting if you do it through walking and just thinking and or talking with somebody or talking into a a microphone and never ever letting anybody listen to it or looking in the mirror and just saying those kind things to yourself reminding you of reality the truth that you are a kind person and you've got many many wonderful qualities many many wonderful qualities And just get in touch with that feeling. You don't have to do it all at once. It could be a gradual process of getting in touch with the reality that you're an amazing person. It doesn't have to happen all at once. It can happen all at once. But it's, it's, it's like anything, it's, we're always changing, we're always growing. We're always gaining more knowledge about the world, about other people, about ourselves. Always learning more. Always learning new ways to cope and to deal with life. New ways to accomplish our goals new ways to feel relaxed and calm new ways to realise that you're a unique person a one off no one else in the world like you you're the only person in the whole world of your kind and you're an amazing person and you need to Start getting in touch with that a bit, you know? You know, I don't expect people to listen to this to suddenly start doing handstands and cartwheels and, you know, walking around with a cape and a superhero costume, you know? <laughs> Selling everyone, I'm wonderful, I'm wonderful. And it's not about that, it's about how you feel. It's about how your feelings change towards yourself it's about feeling more positive towards yourself it's about having more kindness aimed at you from you and welcoming it embracing that kindness 
like it was the sun like sunbathing in the sun but instead you're you're bathing in that kindness and that love that's within you all the time it's almost like it's reflecting off of you and you realise you you haven't got this this uh, sun of kindness and love shining on you it's actually just a big mirror up there and it's just reflecting it back to you from you constantly so I'm going to bring this recording to an end so it's a case I'll just quickly go how <laughs> quick I don't quickly do anything do I I'll just go over it again just write a letter to yourself it can be an email it can be something you do on your tablet on your phone and you can send an email to yourself anyway can't you so I do it to myself sometimes um, just uh, it's the process it is the process so a reassuring letter to yourself with the main two goals reminding yourself of those good qualities that you have those positive qualities that you have and also reminding yourself that things are going to be okay reminding yourself that things will be okay So that's the end of this recording. Thank you very much for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love for me and the wind outside. Bye.